Eyes for Allah, nothing but Allah. Ba is the beginning of Bismillah. Ta is for taqwa, bewaring of Allah. And tha is for thawab, a reward. Ja is for Jannah, the garden of paradise. Ha is for Hajj, the blessed pilgrimage. Kha is for Khatim, the seal of the prophethood given to the Prophet. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Sallallahu sallam wa baraka ala al-mab'uuthi rahmatan lil'alameen Nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man ihtada bi hadyih wa istanna bi sunnatihi ila yawm al-dini amma ba'd Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to this new episode of Ask Huda. Our first question for tonight is from Alam. He says, is this hadith sahih? Is it authentic? Verily, Constantinople shall be opened. Its commander shall be the best commander ever and his army shall be the best army ever. There is a difference of opinion among scholars whether this hadith is authentic or not. And from the various studies of it, it is most likely to be a weak hadith. And this was graded by a Shaykh al-Albani, may Allah have mercy on his soul, to be weak. Though al-Haythami, for example, in Majma' al-Zawaid, rendered its narrat uh, narrators to be uh, authentic and uh, Ibn Abd al-Barr as well but it seems that there are one or two of the narrators in that hadith who are not well known and hence considered by the scholars of hadith to be not authentic therefore it can be authenticated as Hassan and it can be rendered as Da'if and Constantinople as we know is al qustantiniyah well known today or better known today as Istanbul and this had taken place in the early times so there was a time when it was all Christian and then with the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal and after that the hard work and effort of Muhammad al-Fatih of the Ottoman Empire, uh, the son of Murad al Thani, if I'm not mistaken, who managed with the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal, who was actually up brought by his father in an Islamic fashion with an Islamic sheikh or teacher, disciplining him since he was of an early age until he memorized the whole Quran and he learned the rules of Islamic Sharia. Ah. This made this. Uh, 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 caliph, this uh, Amir, this commander to be a successful one with the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal, and he managed to do that. This would happen also at the end of times which means that either Istanbul would fall in the hands of the Christians where the Muslims would fight them for the final, final battle and defeat them with the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal. or it would be still and remain to have Muslim inhabitants but controlled by the non-Muslims or to have Muslim inhabitants as it is alhamdulillah today but have tyrants ruling it and preventing da'wah from spreading there and either way this would happen and that would be the last event of the uh, uh, events that are taking time at the end of times before the Dajjal, the Antichrist, would appear. Once they managed to conquest uh, Istanbul, and then the Dajjal would appear, and Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, would descend, etc., to the end of the events you know. Uh, Rihanna from Saudi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, I have three questions which my friend is asking me. First one is uh, Hazrat uh, Sayyidina Bilal used to stand on uh, Kaaba and give Adhan. So she is asking which uh, direction would he face? 
she is telling prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told that face me while giving adhan is this correct and the second question she is asking is uh, are all the animals in jannah and third question is uh, someone uh, she is uh, asking me uh, prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is dead or alive i said he is dead then she is telling what is the meaning of uh, surah bakara verse 153 allah says don't say them dead they are alive those who strive and die in the cause of allah so what does uh, this mean she is asking me i said their life is different the uh, barzakh life is different from this life but she is not uh, satisfied and she is also asking where are they yani shaheed and martyrs and uh, i said their soul is in the green birds in the jannah but uh, she is not satisfied so i want to know from you what else should i tell her that uh, she must be satisfied jazakallahu khairan assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh jazakum allah Uh, but Sister Rahana's first question, uh, she said that Bilal used to stand on top of the Kaaba. I don't recall him standing on the Kaaba in an authentic hadith. Now we know that the majority of the time, the Prophet and his companions were in Medina. So this would be possible if the Prophet was in, on the conquest of Mecca on the 8th year of Hijrah or when they went for Hajj on the 10th year of Hijrah. So these are the two incidents that might have occurred. But I personally don't know of such uh, um, an incident where he would climb over the Kaaba. And even if this were yani, to be true, facing uh, uh, anywhere would do the job. Like if you enter the Kaaba and you, uh, you pray inside it. Facing any wall would do the job, insha'Allah. As for the Prophet telling him, face me, this is baseless and I uh, uh, have never heard of any such thing. Uh, Saida from Saudi. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Assalamu <coughs> What is uh, the ruling about uh, the prayer of Awabin after the Maghrib Salah? Okay. Yes, I just want to know about that. Okay, I will answer you, inshallah. Uh, Rihanna's second question, uh, are the animals in paradise? And this is a bit ambiguous. If she's asking about the animals of today, When they die, will they go to paradise like humans? And the answer is no, they will not. And the most authentic opinion is that Allah Azza wa Jal would hold them accountable and would take the aggressor, the one who transgressed against another animal, and they, Allah would make them even one way or the other, and then Allah would turn them all into dust. And this is what the last ayah of Surah An-Naba, that the kafir, the disbeliever, when he sees this, he says one of the, the three interpretations of Ya Laytani Kuntu Turaba, one of the three interpretations is that he wishes that he was an animal so that he would be turned into dust and have no punishment in hell no more. But if you are referring to Will there be animals in paradise that Allah would create for the people of paradise? The answer is yes. The Prophet Hassan told us in a number of uh, uh, hadiths about, for example, a horse that flies you anywhere made of a red ruby or emerald. We know this and we just can imagine it, but we can't imagine how beautiful, how uh, uh, sleek, how fast it is. Also, the uh, people who would like to uh, graze their uh, sheep and cattle, Allah Azza wa Jal would grant them this because whatever you wish, Allah makes it happen. You have all the time in the world. Actually, the, the, time, the word time does not exist anymore. It's eternity. So you keep on enjoying it. So Allah Azza wa Jal creates certain types of birds that you look at them, they fall fried or cooked in the way you like it. Allah Azza wa Jal creates certain uh, uh, um, uh, birds that have necks like camel, that they are so beautiful, so huge, and their meat is so tender, as narrated in different 
hadiths and Allah Azza wa knows best. Maryam from Afghanistan. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu uh, I have a question, Shaykh, please. Yes. Uh, the first question is, uh, uh, European Union has uh, banned uh, the selling of arms to Saudi Arabia for the war in Yemen. This uh, is this is not a question, ya, ya Maryam. Ya Maryam. Ya Maryam. And the second Maryam. question... Maryam, Maryam, yeah. listen to me. This is not a question. This is a statement. And this is a political statement. This program is made to educate Muslims about their religion. Whether the European Union has banned the selling of weapons to Saudi Arabia or not, neither you nor me are going to buy anything from them. And they have all the right to ban whomever they wish. And Saudi Arabia has the right to also counter this with any means it sees fit. What does this have to do with you and me? If again this is going to lead us to talk about the justifiable and fair assistance of Saudi Arabia with the other Muslim coalition forces in Yemen, then this is ridiculous. Because what Saudi Arabia is doing with the Muslim forces in Yemen is to restore justice and to save the people from kufr of the Houthis, from the kufr of the Rafidah of Iran. And those who defend them are like them. So if you are defending these Houthis and these Rafidahs, you have a problem in your aqidah. So ask something that is related to Islam rather than ask about something that is way above your pay grade and way above your uh, uh, um, uh, capacity and ability. This is not within your scope of work at all. Uh, third question from Rihanna. She had an argument with another sister about the life of the Prophet ﷺ. And she asked her, is the Prophet alive or is he dead? Usually this question is misleading. Because Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, إِنَّكَ مَيِّتٌ وَإِنَّهُمْ مَيِّتٌ Verily you will die and they will die. So when someone asks you, is the Prophet alive or dead? Counter this by another uh, uh, question. So tell him, if the pro is the Prophet والسلام, alive in his grave in the sense that if we open his grave, he will come out to us? What would they say? No, 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 we cannot do this. Why? If he's alive like us. Let the Prophet come out and solve our problems with the grace of Allah. He says, no, no, they start mumbling. See, these who always emphasize the issue of the life of the Prophet today, they are the super Sufis who claim that the Prophet is everywhere. So they give him attributes of Allah in the sense of knowledge. So they say, he's hadhr, nadhr. So wherever we are, whether we are in uh, uh, Zimbabwe or in China or in the US, the Prophet is with us. He hears us. He listens to us. And he controls the universe. This is shirk. Now you're giving him attributes of only Allah Azza wa Jal who is able to do this. Okay, so is he dead? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. See, as you have stated to him, life is divided into three stages. This life we live in, we're born, we live, we die. Then we move after we die to a second life in between, this dunya and the hereafter, and it's known al-barzakh, which is totally different than our, la uh, our world. Forms and physics do not apply to it in the miraculous night journey, the Prophet ﷺ said that when he was on al Buraq with Jibreel, they passed by the red uh, dune and by the grave of Musa, peace be upon him, and they saw him praying there. Soon afterwards, he reached Jerusalem, al Masjid Al-Aqsa, and he saw Musa there. He was ascended to the uh, fifth heaven, or the sixth heaven, where he met Musa again. 
So what is this? This is something that is or cannot be measured by our own time, uh, um, location, physics, and chemistry. This is way beyond our imagination and ability to understand or comprehend. Likewise, the life of the martyrs, they are dead in their graves, but their souls are in the lungs of green birds traveling in the trees of Jannah. But they're still in this barzakh, in the area between this life and the hereafter. The Prophet body does not body does not change. It is as it is, but he's dead. He doesn't sit in his grave physically. He doesn't mate physically. He doesn't eat and drink. But his soul is treated in a way that we cannot comprehend with connection to his body. And the, this is un, understandable to us. But we cannot say that he's alive like we are alive today. Otherwise, he would come out from his grave and pray with the Muslims the five daily prayers and meet them and answer their questions, and this is not applicable. Fatima from Saudi. Fatima. Hello, Assalamualaikum, Sheikh. Salam wa rahmatullah. Yes, uh, I have three questions. My first question is, uh, uh, this, uh, everyone reads Surah Fatah in my family before an exam or before an interview. I want to know how authentic is that reading Surah Fatah. Okay. And they say reading Surah Fatah gives success. The second question is that uh, we are a family of four, uh, my husband, my son, my daughter, and myself. Sometimes when we are all, uh, outside and when we form a jamaat, I want to know how do we stand when there are two men and two women. Okay. Uh, standing position, side by side or behind, how do we stand? And also, when I uh, go into jamaat with my uh, daughter, only two women, how do we stand? Okay. Uh, this is the question. And the third question is, brother, there's usually, uh, uh, there is a lot of confusion between sadha and uh, charity. Uh, I want to know what is exactly sadha and what is charity. The money that we give to poor, we take it as charity. Mm -hmm. And uh, how does sadha come in that? And uh, can we give uh, charity to our uh, relatives without telling them that it is charity? Like, I know that we can give sadha to our relatives, but... Uh, uh, some, to avert some calamity, we are giving some money. B uh, under which uh, term does it come, sadha or charity? Can you just clarify between the difference between these two and whether we need to tell someone that what it is when, before we give? Okay. These three questions. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah. Alaykum salam. Okay, Saida from Saudi Arabia, she says, can you tell us about Salatul Awwabin? Now, the term of Salatul Awwabin is widely known to be given to Salatul Adha, Salatul Duha. Salatul Awabin is well known to be associated with Salatul Duha, which is prayed after the sunrise and 10 minutes until 10 minutes of the Adhan of Dhuhr. This is the time of Salatul Duha. And the best of it is when it is extremely hot. So it's like 15, 20 minutes before the Adhan of Dhuhr. This is Salatul Awabin. There is another hadith that I think the, 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 the uh, people of the subcontinent use a lot, but it is not authentic, where it states that Salatul Awabin is to pray six rak'ahs between Maghrib and Isha. This is not authentic. And if it were to be authentic, we would call people to do it. We always encourage people to whatever gets them closer to Allah. Now, you have to know and learn that this is a fact. There isn't any scholar, there isn't any student of knowledge, there isn't any da'i who would hold back anything that would get you closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. This is what we do. So the problem is that when the hadith is not authentic, how would I encourage people to do something the Prophet didn't do, alayhi wa One would say, maybe the Prophet did it. Say, if the Prophet did it, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it would have been part of our religion and it would have reached us through authentic hadith. Because it did not reach us through authentic hadith, this clearly means that this is not part of the religion and hence we should not practice it. There are tons and tons of good things that you as an individual can do 
can perform, can offer to Allah Azza wa Jal, that is authentic. That is accepted by Allah. So why choose something that is not? And Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. Fatima from Saudi Arabia. She says that we have a conception, uh, let us say a belief that Fatiha opens all closed doors. And whenever you have an interview for jobs, or you have an examination, or you have something that you want to seek Allah's blessing over it, you recite the Fatiha. How about this, Shaykh? Again, we go back to the basics. What would I lose if I tell you, go ahead, no problem? Nothing. But can I tell you this? Fatiha, by all measures and standards, is the greatest surah of the Qur'an. There's no doubt in that. Chapter number one is the best in the Qur'an, surah. However, to relate it to something that was not related by the Prophet ﷺ, nor by his companions, would be an innovation. Likewise, if someone says, Shaykh, what's the ruling of reciting Surah Al-Fatiha before entering the bathroom for answering the call of nature? Well, this is an innovation. You would probably say, oh, Shaykh, this is inappropriate. So why? Yeah, because uh, the same thing. No matter what you say or what you do, it has to coincide with the Quran and the Sunnah. If it's not there in the sunnah, then it becomes an innovation. Like, for example, if we sneeze, we say alhamdulillah. If someone says, when you sneeze, say alhamdulillah, and Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Muhammad, and recite the fatiha, and then wipe your face. Well, that sounds nice. But it's not from Islam. This is innovation. You're sinful. Likewise, if someone uh, uh, um, says, after you, meet, uh, you finish your uh, meal, then you recite uh, some dua, you do this, you do that, which is not attributed to the Prophet ﷺ. This would be an innovation, and Allah Azza wa knows best. We have Muhammad from the Emirates. Assalamu alaikum. Salam wa rahmatullah. Ah, yes, I have three questions. Yes, sir. Like, uh, is it required to pay zakat for a gold uh, every year? Uh, what I mean is, like, whether we have to pay for a gold which uh, we had already pay, paid in this year, and uh, the second question is like uh, is covering face is mandatory for uh, women in islam okay and third question is like uh, we are having some sort of some empty land like we will be using that for some building purpose in future do we need to give zakat for that empty land what was the intention of keeping it uh, the intention of uh, in future like uh, to build a home over there okay i will answer you inshallah okay jazakallah okay. Um, Fatima's second question, she says that they are a family of four, herself, her husband, and her son and daughter. When they pray in congregation, assuming that there is no masjid in the vicinity, because we know that men are obliged to pray in the masjid. So let's assume they are in an area where there is no masjid in the vicinity, and they would like to pray together. How would they stand? The answer is easy and simple. The husband and his son stand side by side. And behind them stands the mother and her daughter. If you are praying with your daughter alone in congregation, she stands right to you in the same line. And if you were more than one female, you, the imam of the females, who is a female, stands in the same row. While... The imam of men, if they are more than two, he stands in front of the other uh, uh, male worshippers, uh, uh, and Allah Azza wa knows best. Her third question is about the difference of charity and sadaqa. And she failed to tell me what charity is in Arabic. Charity, to my knowledge, is anything good that you do. So... If you go and give money to a poor person, this is sadaqah. And if you want to translate sadaqah, you translate it into charity. So if you build a masjid, this is charity. And it is also sadaqah because it's a good deed. 
So she has a confusion whether only sadaqa can be given as a form of helping a poor person or anything that is in general uh, uh, for the good of humanity would be considered sadaqa. The answer is anything that you do for the good of humanity, not only that, even for the animal world, that would be considered sadaqa. The Prophet Sallallahu was asked about a person who gave water to a dog and Allah forgave his sins because of that. The companions were shocked and they said that even if we help these animals, we are rewarded. So the Prophet said, Fi kulli kabidin ratbatin ajr. That in every moist liver, meaning a living creature because the moist liver indicates that this creature is alive, you are rewarded. So this is a sadaqah. And in another hadith, the Prophet told us that when you pour water in the bucket of your brother, this is a sadaqah. When you help him uh, 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 pick up or lift uh, his luggage, this is sadaqah. If you direct someone to the correct direction, this is sadaqah. So many means of sadaqah which easily interprets to charity. So anything good that you do can be considered as charity or sadaqah, and it's the same meaning. We have a short break. Stay tuned, and inshallah, we'll be right back. Zad's group present to you three of the best versions for Sheikh Muhammad Saleh Al Munajjid in English language. How he treated them. Interaction of the greatest leader, the pilgrims' provision. For more information, please visit one of those websites. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today we're going to talk about the book Interactions of the Greatest Leader. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam trained his companions to be modest. Hakim bin Hizam, may Allah be pleased with him, said, I asked the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he gave me, then I asked him another two times and each time he gave me then he sallallahu alayhi wasallam told me O oh, hakim this life is green and beautiful so whoever takes it without greed or persisting on asking for it will have blessing in it and whoever takes it while making it close to their heart will not have blessing in it they will be like the one who eats without becoming full the hand that is higher giving the poor is better than the one that is lower receiving from others. So I said, O Messenger of Allah, by him who has sent you with the truth, I will never ask anyone for money until I die. Afterwards, Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, called Hakim, may Allah be pleased with him, in order to give him, but he refused to take. And the same with Umar. So Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, said, O oh Muslims, you are my witness that I have offered some of this booty to Hakim, but he refused to take it. Hakim did not take money from anyone after the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam until he died. Reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Allah, la Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome back. Muhammad from the Emirates asked three questions. His first question was the ruling on paying zakat over the gold, meaning the gold of a woman, the jewelry. And this is an issue of dispute among scholars. The most authentic opinion is that it is mandatory for a woman to pay go a uh, zakat over the gold she possesses whether she wears it or she stores it this doesn't make any difference and this is the most authentic opinion of scholars now brother uh, muhammad question originated because there are a group of brothers in the subcontinent in in india particularly 
who say that you pay zakat once in a lifetime, like hajj. And that is it. So if you have a kilogram of gold, خلاص, you pay once and that's it. You never pay it again. And this is baseless. This is total bogus. You should not pay any attention of this or to this. And these brothers should refrain from yani, involving themselves in, in things they don't have uh, uh, knowledge over. Zakat is due every single year on your gold, on your, on your wealth, on your money, etc. And this, what the, he, they had said, is totally uh, unaccepted. Uh, Abdurrahman from Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I have a question. Yes, Sahih. My mother always tells me to read Surah Fatta, Surah number 48, because it provides success before exams. Okay. So, is it true? Okay. okay Any more questions? Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah Okay. Um, Muhammad's second question, he says, what's the ruling on women covering their faces? And this, again, is an issue of dispute. The most authentic opinion of scholars is that a woman's face must be covered in the presence of non-mahram men, in the presence of strangers. So when she goes out, she must cover her face. And she's entitled only to leave a small gap for her eyes so that she could see clearly. And this is known as niqab. And the evidence of this, the evidences are overwhelming in the Quran and in the Sunnah. In uh, verse 53 of Surah Al-Ahzab, Surah number 33, and also in uh, verse uh, 59, of the same surah where the instruction to the Prophet ﷺ to order his wives, his daughters, and the believing women to lower their garments from above and cover their faces. And this is instruction of the Prophet's wives. And this is clearly explained in verse 53. So 59 combines them with the other women of the Muslim nation, which means that they all share the same thing in that is in covering the face. Uh, his third question was the ruling on a piece of land which he had purchased and it's an empty plot and his intention is to build on it maybe after 5, 10, 15, 20 years, Allah knows when. So is there any zakat on it? The answer is no. There is no zakat on it at all unless you change your intention into trading, meaning that you have developed a new intention to sell it and then buy a bigger one so that you can sell the bigger one and make a profit out of it and keep on circulating the wealth into buying and selling. In this case, yes, you have to pay zakat. Other than that, as long as you intend to build on it or you don't have an intention for it at all, then there is no zakat on that. Rashid from the Emirates. Hello, hello, uh, Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum, rahmatullah, Rashid. Yeah, Sheikh, I want to know about the zakat. Uh, majority of Muslims take out their zakat in the month of Ramzan. Okay. Uh, this fixing of a month, uh, taking out zakat in the Ramzan, is it proof from Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or it is a bida okay. of fixing a month? Okay. Any more questions? No, sir. Uh, no, Sheikh. And okay. one more thing, Sheikh. This, uh, is it similar to fixing a date of Isale Sawab, how this people fix on third day, ninth day, and 40th day of the death? Is this both same of fixing a date and the month? For what? For uh, commemorating a deceased? Yeah, the, yes. Uh, for distributing food on behalf of death. Okay, we, say, we accept it, right? Uh, the Isale Sawab on behalf of that. But okay. we say you cannot fix a day, you know, like the third day, ninth day, or 40th day. So okay. Similarly, uh, like this fixing of date is not allowed. Similarly, the fixing of month should also be not be allowed, right? For okay. zakat. Okay, I will answer you, inshallah. Yes, sir. Thank you. Hayyakallah. 
uh, Abdul Rahman from Saudi Arabia, he says that his mother orders him to recite the Fatiha and Surah uh, number 48 so that Allah Ad Azza wa Jal would grant him success before uh, an examination. And this is all baseless. Again, such instruction is an innovation. How would you know that reciting the Fatiha before an examination or Surah 48 or Surah 105 or whatever would grant you success in an examination or in an interview without any solid proof, then this is baseless. Now, if you come to Surat uh, uh, um, or the statement of uh, Prophet Musa in Surat Taha, where he says, رَبِّ اشْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي وَيَسِّرْ لِي أَمْرِي وَحْلُوا الْعُقْدَةً مِنْ لِسَانِي يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي When he's asking Allah Azza wa Jal to facilitate his affair, to expand his chest, to uh, uh, make him able to talk fluently and to make all of his affairs uh, 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 good. If someone says this dua as a dua in anything, this is permissible, it's a dua. But when you say the Fatiha for such things and you relate it to such things, this is not accepted. Aisha from Nigeria. Aisha. Okay, I think we've lost Aisha. Um, Rashid from the Emirates, he says, <clears throat> there are people who allocate the time of the year to paying their zakat in Ramadan. So isn't this a bid'ah? Because he is he's elaborating that people sometimes, for example, um, designate the third day of the death of a deceased, the ninth, the fortieth, or a year, so that they would cook food and distribute it to the poor. Wouldn't that be the same? The answer is, no, it's not the same. Cooking food and distributing it for the deceased is an innovation by itself. And this is not something that is recommended. While giving your zakat, whenever there is a need for it, is recommended. However, specifying Ramadan with your zakat, this is not recommended. And it's actually not a good thing to do. Why? Because zakat is due when a full lunar year has passed on the wealth or the possession of money that you have. And this means that most likely 90% of the people would have their lunar year completed in the 11 months other than Ramadan. But by specifying Ramadan to pay it in uh, uh, the zakat in it, they would deprive the poor Muslims from 11 months of the year. And this is wrong. We should give them according to the time so that they would benefit throughout the whole year. Aisha from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Assalamu wa barakatuh. Please, my question is here. How can you seek, how can you treat panic attacks and anxiety in Islam? How can? You treat panic attacks. Panic and attacks. anxiety in Islam. Yeah, and anxiety in Islam. Okay. Any more questions? No, Sheikh. Was that Okay. Uh, Aisha's question is quite common, especially among sisters. Just the other day, a couple of days ago, I ha had a lecture about paradise or the people of paradise, and one of the sisters told or asked the same question that she has uh, 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 panic attacks and she, she has a lot of anxiety and the, the, the heart beats in a very fast rate. So what's the solution? As usual, we tend to put all our trouble and blame our problems over jinn possession. So if my wife is nagging, she, she is possessed uh, uh, by jinn. If my daughter does not make it in the exam, there is an uh, evil eye on her. If there is a flat tire, this is envy. If my business is not uh, successful, then this is black magic. 
and we fail to see that it's our own shortcomings and failures. Anxiety and panic attacks happen only when people do not have full trust, dependence, and reliance on Allah Azza wa Jal, better known as tawakkul. Now I know that those who have these attacks would say, no, 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 we have full tawakkul on Allah. We pray five times a day, we fast uh, uh, Ramadan, we give charity, we read the Quran. Yes, but this is all external. What goes in your heart is the most important thing. When the idol worshippers threw Ibrahim into the raging fire, how was his heart? As calm as it can be. When the Prophet ﷺ was with Abu Bakr in the cave and there were idol worshippers, fighters trying to pursue them, the, the posse was trying to kill them or capture them. What did Abu Bakr say? O oh, Prophet of Allah, if they looked under their feet, they would see us. And the Prophet answered him in a very calm voice, Abu Bakr, what do you think of three, of two? Allah is the third. Where is your dependence on Allah? Where is your trust in Allah? The Prophet was as calm as it can be. Why? Because he has full trust and reliance on Allah Azza wa Now Allah says, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَئِنُّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ قُلُوبُ Allah is describing the people of Jannah, that they are those who believe, and their hearts are filled with tranquility through remembering Allah. Allah says, by Allah, or verily, by remembering Allah, the tranquility of the hearts are attained, or is attained. So the best means of counterattacking and healing your panic attacks is through knowing that nothing would harm you except with the will of Allah. And another sister asked me a couple of days ago of suffering of the same thing. And I told her, listen, this is a wall. What, happen, what happens if you bang your head f 10 times as strong as you can in the wall? She says, I'll injure my head and have a very bad headache. And what will happen to the wall? She said, nothing. So I asked her, then why worry? As long as Allah Azza wa Jal has ordained everything 50,000 years before he had created the heavens and the earth. Why worry? Khalat, let it be. Let your trust and your confidence be in Allah Azza wa Jal. Depend on him. Rely on him. Know that he will take care of you. No matter what happens, it's Allah's will. Khalas, accept it. Then you will find that there isn't anything such as panic attacks. It does not exist anymore. Faisal from Saudi. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu First of all, I will heartily congratulations for the producer and for you, Sheikh, that it is a great program for a common Muslims like us. Jazakallah khair for that. Barakallah Sheikh, I have one question. Yes. Like this is similar to what you were speaking right now. Uh, usually I feel whenever I do something good, like I'm a doctor, if I do something good for a patient out of my way, or if I do charity, or if I do sadka, I tend to fall ill. So uh, believe me, it's not like I'm not, uh, I'm a mature person, I can understand, I have full faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but if I su suppose post anything good on Facebook or anything, within two, three hours, some illness falls on me. Uh, is it right way of thinking or not? Or if it is so, what is the remedy for the evil eye or, you know, uh, uh, anything uh, like that? Okay, uh, uh, Dr. Faisal, do you pray in the masjid? Uh, no, Sheikh. Actually, we have a compound, which is a Western compound. Okay, okay. And I understand, I understand. Do you maintain your morning and evening athkar? Uh, no, not, not, uh, honestly, not, okay. not, I don't. Okay, so I will answer you, inshallah. Okay, Jazakallah. What is that? Now, brothers Faisal, Dr. Faisal, 
this is a big problem. And it's not f only for him, for all the Muslims. See, again, if I were to ask you, Akhi, uh, can I use your, um, can I take a look at your laptop? You'd say, oh, what? No, Sheikh, sorry, I can't. It's uh, uh, password protected. He said, yeah, I'd like to open it for me. He said, ah, oh, Sheikh, I have to remove the cache and, and the, the cookies, and I have to go to the Internet Explorer and remove the history, and I have to go to YouTube and remove the history. He says, why? He said, Sheikh, you, you may see something you don't like. He said, okay, why are you watching something Allah does not like, let alone us people who are nothing? He said, ah, oh, Sheikh, forgive, ask Allah for uh, forgiveness for me, make dua, I'm sinful. Okay. After we go through all of this, can I see your uh, um, laptop? Is it protected against viruses? Yes, yeah, Sheikh, I have the best antivirus that money can buy. He said, Subhanallah. So you would never be af afflicted by uh, um, these, antivirus, these viruses. No, Alhamdulillah, I'm protected. We, as human beings, are similar to these laptops and, and computers. There is evil eye, there is envy, there is jinn, there is black magic. How can we get protection? By installing antivirus. Your antivirus, sort of, to say, is the Qur'an and the Sunnah. These are your shield, remembering Allah Azza wa Jal. So first of all, if you don't observe your adhkar after each fard prayer, if you don't pray in the masjid with the congregation, if you don't have a masjid, you pray with the jama'ah, one or two in the compound, but not alone. Thirdly, if you don't observe the morning and the evening adhkar, it's like prescribing an antibiotic to be taken every eight hours, administered on time, and someone says, well, I take it only in the afternoon, and I skip the other two. As a doctor, would this help? Would this work? Definitely not. There's a dosage that you have to take, otherwise you will not be immune and you will not be protected. So therefore, you have to do this. Secondly, Akhi, when you say that whenever I do something good, I fall sick in, a, in an hour or two or three. Now let me hypothetically agree with you. What are your options? One, don't do anything good so that you would not feel sick, so that you would not have any calamity. Is this logical? This is shaitan sitting on his chair, putting uh, 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 his leg over the other one, laughing his head off. Look, I'm playing with him. Option two, to consider this as hallucination, as something that is of your own imagination or of your subconscious, convincing you of this. You know, they have the, what they call the uh, placebo, I think it's called. This is when they give a patient who had gone to a hundred doctors and they say, you have nothing wrong in you. And he still complains of aches and illnesses. So a smart doctor would give him tablets and say, listen, if you don't take this every couple of hours, you will die. Take these for a whole week. And it's not my responsibility if anything happens to you. So the man goes back and he takes these pills on time. He comes after a week. How are you now? So, oh, alhamdulillah, doctor, you're the best. I'm, I'm recovered. Well, I gave you fake tablets. They, these are nothing. These are just uh, uh, salt and, and whatever. They have no effect on you. It's all in your mind. You, Akhi, are convincing yourself of the same effect. That whenever I do something good, if I post something on Facebook, I'll fall sick. De depend on Allah. Ask Allah for assistance. Read Ruqi on yourself and keep on doing good Instead of once a day, do it a hundred times a day so that you would make shaitan eat his heart out. You will anger him more and more, make him frustrated, agitate him. The hell with him. This is where he's going eventually. So the hell with him. But never ever stop doing good uh, deeds. Reach from Saudi Arabia, I apologize for keeping you waiting. Reach from Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Salam to Allah. We put nail polish seven days a month when we don't have to pray. My friend told me we should not put as if we die with nail polish. When ghusl is done, nail polish does not come out. 
Is it true? Does okay. nail polish come off a dead body's finger? Okay, second question. Uh, what? Is there any second question? No, there's no other okay, question. Okay, I will answer you, Rij. Um, Rij is asking about a misconception where people think that if a woman dies while having her um, uh, manicure or a nail polish on her uh, nails, that her ghusl would not be valid and this would affect her death, etc. This is all baseless. This has no basis in Islam, none whatsoever. Not that I'm endorsing nail polish. On the contrary, I think that women wearing na nail polish is not a good thing. And unfortunately, as Rij said, this is a sort of invitation. It's like a woman going out, advertising to everybody that, hey, look, I have nail polish, I've got my menses on. So what is this? Are you telling people that you have your, 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 your monthly period? And this is awkward. Now they have these weird, you know, uh, uh, hard rock colors. So you can have uh, uh, nail polish in black. Some of them have like multicolor on the 10 fingers. And all of this is ways of shaitan. They are imitating the disbelievers. Whatever they do, they do it. So some of them now, they're painting faces on it. They're putting uh, different decorations as if life has no ending, as they're living forever, wasting their time and their money on such ridiculous things. I do not say that wearing nail polish for girls or for women is prohibited. This is my own uh, 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 personal opinion. However, ha does it have any effect on a woman when she dies? No, it doesn't. And a, a, a few drops of acetone would clear it off before washing uh, if there is any need for that, though there is not a, a particular need in doing so because when we give her the full body or the ritual bath, this is not for her to pray or to perform Umrah. This is her last bath to prepare her for her grave. So what your friend had told you is totally uh, baseless and not true. Muhammad says, is, um, if I memorize a surah to enjoy in the prayer, is this shirk? This is a big problem. I get tons of similar questions. Sheikh, if I open the door with my left hand, is this shirk? Sheikh, if my father looks at me while I am reciting Surah al falha and he smiles, did he commit an act of apostasy? There is a tendency in some of the youth to label people with kufr or label themselves. One says that I was reciting the Quran and I was so happy with the way I'm reciting my Quran, I, I thought that I've committed shirk, so I nullified, I broke my prayer, and I said shahada and made ghusl. What kind of insanity is this? And what drives people to this? It is ignorance. The more ignorant you are in Islam, the more controlling shaitan. He plays like you, like a soccer ball, a football. Because you don't have knowledge, so he tosses you right, left, and center. When you have knowledge of Islam, when you learn your religion, when you recite the Quran, when you know what are the things that nullify your Islam, you know aqidah issues, you know the attributes of Allah, only then you will be able to counter attack these whispers that you get. There are so many people who are so confused about this. Akhi, if you recite and memorize the Quran to enjoy it in Salat, this is a form of ibadah. You're worshipping Allah by enjoying your prayer, by enjoying reciting the Qur'an. There's nothing wrong in that, let alone to be close to shirk or render it as shirk. And Allah Azza wa knows best. This is all the time we have. Until we meet next time, I leave you fi amalillah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Eyes for Allah, nothing but Allah. Ba is the beginning of Bismillah. Ta is for taqwa, bewaring of Allah. And tha is for thawab, a reward. 
J is for Jannah, the garden of paradise. Ha is for Hajj, the blessed pilgrimage. Kha is for Khatim, the seal of the prophethood given to the prophet.